Thank you for listening. Taco Tuesday. It's your boy, Marcus Lowe's Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Gloves Off Podcast. Your first, your last, your everything. And all that is combat sports. We are coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement in a crispy, crispy white tee. We are powered by IE Sports Radio. Your directly for all that is sports. Before we get started... Just in case them feds is listening. All thoughts and opinions of the Gloves All podcast are the thoughts and opinions of my own, Mr. Marcus Los Great, and in no way, shape, or form represent the thoughts and opinions of IE Sports Radio. Let's get the show on the road. As you know, it's been very busy. Your boy took vacation last week. You know, I was beachside, you know, in Newport Beach. You know, it was about, I want to say, less than about 30 yards from the um, beach, you know. Basically, I could look from my porch and see the beach. It was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing, you know? (laughs) So um, that's the reason why we were absent for last week. And um, as you can see, um, all chaos is basically gone, you know, gone on since I've been gone. You know, starting off with um, De La Hoya, you know, Oscar is getting sued. Well, not just Oscar. Oscar and DeZone is getting sued by Canelo Alvarez. That's quite interesting because by suing DeZone and by suing Oscar, what he's attempting to do is to eliminate both those companies from the Canelo Alvarez business. That's interesting. It makes you wonder what is Oscar, well, what is Golden Boy? What is Golden Boy without Canelo? Because outside of Canelo, they have a bunch of guys that they're trying to build up as stars, but they have no real stars. So that would create, I believe, a money vacuum in the company. It could turn Golden Boy into a third-rate promotional company. That's quite interesting. 
because Golden Boy has been a heavyweight promoting Oscar himself, then promoted Hopkins, then promoted Sugar Shane Mosley, and then promoted Floyd Mayweather. And then they were promoting Canelo Alvarez. So they've been holding their own in the promotional bank per se. But without Canelo, that leaves them lacking of a star. They got a bunch of young pups in the kennel that they're breeding, that they're building, that they're, you know, putting a lot of energy in. But none of those guys move the needle. That is going to be quite interesting to see what happens with that. Quite interesting. Want to give a shout out to the chat room. Mr. Taryn Rodriguez is live. Mr. Davidson Crookus is live. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. You live in Newport Beach? What, Taryn? <laughs> The nerve of you. You can't live there. <laughs> you go there for vacation. You can't live there, bro. <laughs> now I'm jealous. <laughs> the nerve of you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If I could live there, it would be amazing. I just can't afford it at this point. You know, I had to come back and you had to re-up, you know. <laughs> and I had to come back and re-up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, that's crazy. <laughs> ah, man, I would have definitely hit you up, Taryn, if I knew you lived there, man. You know, basically, I went um, radio silent while I was there. Really didn't, um, you know, get on Facebook or get on um, Twitter while I was there. You know, I had strict orders from the wife. So, <laughs> so you know, I want no problems. You know what I'm saying? I want no problems. <laughs> uh, but if I knew you were there, I would have definitely hit you up. You know what I'm saying? Would have definitely hit you up. Uh, we'll probably be going there again uh, next year. You know what I'm saying? So definitely could have definitely could have could link up. You know what I'm saying? If you're still living there next year. One thing that I thought about with the Oscar De La Hoya Canelo, Canelo situation is does Canelo really need Oscar at this point? At this point in his career. Does he need Golden Boy Promotions to do his business? You know, some people would say no, that he doesn't, that he could create his own. You know, he's been running, um, what is it, Canelo Alvarez Promotions, but much to the same effect as um, Floyd, you know, basically it's just a, a shell company. Is not a true um, promotional company at this point. So that's one of the issues that he would run into in the event that he decided to go out on his own and try to create, um, you know, promote, promote his own fights. And then I know we, you, you, we all seen the blunder with, um, you know, his legal team tried to um, file the motion this week and their case ended up getting dismissed because I guess Canelo's um, legal team didn't file the correct paperwork. Bruh, if you can't even get a legal team to do the correct paperwork, what is the likelihood of you being able to run a promotional company? I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm concerned, bruh. <laughs> you don't got your business under control as much as you're making it seem like out in these streets. You know what I'm saying? 
That's quite interesting. Continuing with boxing, I know that you guys have, um, you know, heard what's going on between Devin Haney and Gary Russell Jr. These cats is wilding in these streets. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) The featherweight champion took to social media calling for a fight. With Devin Haney, he said he was willing to take the offer of $1.5 million. And Devin Haney stepped to the plate. He stepped to the plate. He got his team together. And Team Haney immediately responded, accepting the challenge and sending over a contract. <laughs> Uh, uh, I love this. You know what I'm saying? When someone brings smoke to your front yard, you got to let them know you a chimney. (laughs) You want all that smoke. You know what I'm saying? You want it all. (laughs) So Haney sends him the contract. Contract gets denied. Team Haney is wondering what's going on. You said you would take the 1.5. What's going on? Why are you rejecting the contract? Supposedly, Gary Russell was a little disappointed that it didn't reveal whether the zone or match room were included in the contract. This is very important because Gary Russell has to get paid and he needs to know Who's going to pay him? It's definitely not going to be Team Haney. That money is going to be funneled into Team Haney through Matchroom or DAZN. And Gary Russell needs to know who's going to pay him. So that was a valid reason. That was a valid reason to, um, you know, basically bulk at the contract. Then, on Fanon International, with a live Gary Russell Jr. and the father of Devin Haney, Mr. Bill Haney, it was revealed that the money wasn't there and that it seemed that neither the zone or match room was interested in that fight. That's interesting because Devin Haney currently has a November date scheduled and they're thinking of possibly putting him in there with Gamboa. You have money to give Gamboa, but you don't have money for Gary Russell Jr.? That's interesting. That's interesting. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That's quite interesting. We have to, as fans, stop allowing promotional companies to eliminate fights that we want to see. Now, how do we do that? Unfortunately, in order to do that, We have to stop watching our favorite fighters fight until they fight the fights that we want them to watch. I had to make this stand previously before. Huge Floyd Mayweather fan. It got to the point where I couldn't defend why he wasn't fighting Manny Pacquiao anymore. Well, I could have, but I refused to. You know, it was to the point where I was like, he has to fight Manny Pacquiao next or I'm not purchasing any more Floyd Mayweather fights. I said that. Magically, after I said that, Stephen A. on first take said that, 
magically Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather get in the ring. Magically. <laughs> you see, can you see how that happens? That's magic. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> you know, we got people on the airwaves telling the fans that we ain't going to purchase any more fights. And suddenly the promotional companies decide that, oh, it'd be a good idea to go ahead and make this fight now. A good idea. That's interesting. That's quite interesting. We have to, as boxing fans, stop allowing promotional companies to dictate. See, Dana White in the UFC has decided that he's he's not even going to give us the option to dictate. He's going to make the fight before we even ask for it. And that's the reason why his business model continues to run strong. It's the reason why his business model continues to outdo boxing. Now, I'm not naive. I get it. I get it. Basically, all the fighters are signed to UFC. So because they're signed to UFC, he doesn't care whether they win or lose because in the event that the person who loses, um, you know, loses to his fighter. So basically, he continues to make money off of the winner or the loser no matter what. I got it. I get it. The problem that I have with that is I don't even see, you know, PBC fighters fighting each other like that. Now, I will say that they've been a little bit more active in making fights that we want to see. So I'll give them kudos for that. But Top Rank isn't doing that. Top rank isn't doing that at all. In fact, the way that top rank operates is that you have to sign to top rank. You have to give them options on you in order to fight their fighters. This is the reason why Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao did not happen sooner because they were trying to get options on Floyd Mayweather Jr. Not only that, they tried to dictate terms to him when he was out selling Manny Pacquiao. How are you going to dictate when you are the B-side? This didn't stop. Even when Manny Pacquiao got knocked out, they decided that they were going to tell Floyd that they they needed to receive 40% of the pie no matter what. You don't deserve 40% of the pie. Yes, Manny Pacquiao sells. Yes, we got it. Unfortunately, due to him losing, he deserved no more than 30%. I think they ended up settling on 35% or something to that effect. That's interesting. So you got money for Gamboa, but you don't have money to put on Gary Russell Jr. versus Devin Haney. That's interesting. That's interesting. I know one thing. I won't be watching. Uh, <laughs> Um, I was getting out of hand. <laughs> the nerve of me. I was getting out. Of I was getting out of hand there. I'll definitely be watching Devin Haney versus um, Gamble. <laughs> the nerve of me. You know what I'm saying? The nerve of me. Uh, moving on uh, with boxing. Keith Thurman. 
Keith Thurman did an interview this weekend. He talked about his struggles with depression since losing to Manny Pacquiao. He indicated one of the reasons why he felt that he lost to, you know, Manny Pacquiao is because he's been struggling with weight over the course of his last two fights. Keith, are you listening? Are you listening? Keith, are you listening? Bruh, we don't care. You know what I'm saying? You are a boxer. Your job is to box. And part of being a boxer is making sure that you're disciplined to the sport. You have to dedicate yourself to this game. Otherwise, you get washed. You know what I'm saying? So we don't care. We don't care, bro. We don't care at all. (laughs) We don't care at all. I'm sorry. Not sorry. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) The nerve of you. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Your whole job is to be disciplined. And if you can't do that, then you got to get out of boxing. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. (laughs) The nerve of you. (laughs) Good God. (laughs) Also, this weekend, (laughs) Conor McGregor was arrested in France for sexual assault. (sighs) When I first heard this, I immediately said, not again, not again. The first time I was like, I backed him, right? You're like, okay, maybe there was a misunderstanding or something to that effect. You know, he can't possibly be out here raping women in these streets, right? <laughs> he can't possibly do it, be doing this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he just can't possibly be doing this, right? <laughs> and then another one popped up. And I'm like thinking to myself, sir, sir, (laughs) another one. (laughs) See, uh, if you have one, okay, maybe we can be, uh, you you know, basically you're like, okay, her word versus his, you know, maybe it was misunderstanding. But when you got two, bro, two, nah, man, you got to change up your deliveries. There's something that you're doing that's creating these scenarios where you're sexually assaulting women. And then I read the article. The article says that he was arrested for flashing a woman, flashing her. She was headed to the bathroom. He flashed her. That's not sexual assault. That's not raping women. Now, that is indecent exposure. But that's not sexual assault. That's not raping women. Why are we labeling these terms as sexual assault? This is confusing what sexual assault is. You know, I'm one of them old heads. Sexual assault is where you're taking something from someone that doesn't belong to you. And I can't co-sign that out in these streets. I refuse to. I wasn't raised that way. (laughs) I wasn't raised that way. I can't co-sign that. (laughs) But if you out here flashing women, I can't see that as sexual assault. I'm sorry. You know, I see that as a flash. Now, mind you, you know, if a woman flashed a man, That man would not, that man would not say anything about it. Be like, oh, titties. (laughs) You know, I get get it. I get it. You know, no one wants to be flashed. No one wants to be flashed. I I, I get it. I get it. No one wants to be flashed. But for us to be out here in these streets calling that sexual assault, I don't I can't agree with that. Can't agree with that at all. 
Connor, you got to pull it together, bro. You got to stop with the nonsense. You got to get in the ring. You got to get active, man. The more time that you have outside the ring, it seems like you keep finding yourself in these type of situations, man. And at the end of the day, we just want to see you fight. That's all we want to do. We want to see you fight. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't, these shenanigans that are happening got to come to an end, bro. They got to. Otherwise, you're going to be in prison. You're going to be in prison, bro. They're going to put you under the jail. <laughs> under the jail. This weekend is going to be UFC Fight Night. It's going to feature Tyron Woodley versus Colby Covington. And I have mixed feelings, really, about this fight. I really do. And I'll tell you why. Um, Colby is going to be viewed as the bad guy. He supports Donald Trump. So everyone's going to hate him for that. Um, supposedly, Tyron is... Um, going to have Black Lives Matter added to his shorts. I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan of that at all. Um, in fact, I honestly don't support the um, Black Lives Matter um, company at all. Um, I feel that it's more in support for you know, for everyone else other than the black man himself. I feel like um I don't I don't feel that, you know, that that there's the support underneath that umbrella for black men. Especially when your movement is Black Lives Matter. Another problem that I have with them is that they allow other entities to hijack their me their messaging. They allow other entities to be present when they're doing their protests. That's ridiculous. There's no reason why these other entities are out here destroying shops, destro destroying stores, destroying businesses under the Black Lives Matter umbrella. That's not a good look, bruh. Not a good look at all. So he's going to have those um, added onto his shorts and... He's coming in to fight Colby this weekend. He also claims that he's rejuvenated since losing his last two fights. Honestly, I think that Tyron Woodley is washed. I think at 37 years old, Tyron Woodley isn't the same type of fighter that he once was. This dude used to get busy. You know, he was one of my favorite UFC fighters. And um, I don't think he has it anymore. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's about that smoke anymore. Um, he's a fighter, so he'll, you know, he's, he'll get in the ring, but I just don't feel that he, he can see the opportunities that are presented to him. I don't think he can take the shots he used to be able to take, you know, so what happens if Tyrone loses this fight? I think if he stays active, 
he remains as a gatekeeper. He becomes the guy who all these upcoming guys end up fighting before they get into championship type of fights. That's who he becomes. If Colby wins this fight, I think he goes straight to the top. I think we'll see Usman versus Colby too, which was a great fight. Back and forth, wrestling, toe-to-toe, blow-to-blow type of type of fight. I would I would love to see it again. I would love to see it again. Definitely would love to see that again. Taryn says Manny versus Mayweather part two. Didn't we all agree no to that? No, I never agreed to that. I was always in favor of running it back. I was always in favor of running it back because most of the Pacquiao fans felt that he won that fight. I don't see how. (laughs) I don't see how. But they felt like because his shoulder was hurt that, um, you know, in a second fight he would do better. (laughs) How'd that work out for my Donna? <laughs> you know? <laughs> How'd that work out for my Donna? <laughs> no, I think second fight would be even easier than the first fight. I think second fight, Floyd KOs Manny Pacquiao. Walks him down with the jab. Start working him to that body and start teeing off on him with lead rights. But at this stage of the game, I would prefer Floyd to stay out of the ring. You know, he's just getting older. And the only thing that can happen to him in the ring now is he will lose. You know, fighting is a young man's game, not an old man's game. You see an old man in the ring, you'll eventually see that old man get knocked out. (laughs) That is exactly what would happen. (laughs) So both of these guys, I would actually love to see um, finally hang it up and get out of the ring. I know Manny Pacquiao is still showing flashes of him, of his old self, you know, with the win over Thurman. Um, I would like to see him in his next fight versus um, Garcia. Um, I think that would be a good fight for him. It would also be a guy that's his, his kind of like his body build. Um, Garcia honestly shouldn't be fighting above 140 40 pounds. That dude is campaigning in a 147 division. He actually got in the ring with Spence, so I'll give him props for that. But the truth of the matter is, is he's not elite at 147. So that's the reason why I believe, um, you know, he should definitely get in there with uh, Manny. Both of them are um, known by the fans, so it would definitely be a pay-per-view extravaganza. And um, it would definitely be good business. I agree, Davidson. Floyd Foot should just count his money. You know what I'm saying? Just stay in the big boy mansion counting that money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> he shouldn't be doing nothing else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for following the heavyweight champion of the free world via Twitter at Gloves Off Boxing and IE Sports Radio at IE Sports Radio. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sending all your questions to the show at GlovesOffBoxing at gmail.com. I'm out. I'm on to the next one. <laughs>